So I use the Howard Benson vocal multiplier along with Howard Benson vocals. I'll turn off the multiplier on Howard Benson vocals. And the reason um, we made this plugin is a lot of people wanted to have more control over this module. This is almost like if you were, uh, analogy would be like if you had bass treble and that's all you had for your EQ. But, you know, this would be like having 20 different, you know, controls over different frequencies. That's just the analogy. So as opposed to just having, you know, offset, which is, you know, uh, more chaos of the vocals and the amount. Now you have the control over the offset, which would be your pitch mod and your timing. And you have control over the tone. You can create that low octave we spoke about earlier. Different compression, saturation, and vocal density. So um, also in here, when you bring this in here, when you add vocal delay and everything, you're affecting everything. Here, you're just adding your vocal delay and reverb to the additional vocals. And we had some people mention that they wanted to just affect the multiplier separately when it came to out, you know, to um, timing issues like delay and reverb, which are time, you know, dependent plugins, time dependent uh, parts of the plugin. So, um, so that's pretty much why we did it. And I think it's pretty cool because uh, on this one, you really can't vary the width and the amount, the width very easily. Here you can really change the stereo width just by going like this and varying the amount of voices like that. And then you can mess around with the pitch mod and timing. You're here, you're just sort of stuck with two knobs. So of all the stuff in the Howard Benson vocals, a lot of the other modules are pretty straightforward. Everybody kind of understands what they are. This was the only module where people were like, hey, I want to dig deeper into that. So that's kind of why we built this one. This is one of those things where I think if you put it on different instruments, you're going to find different results. This would be the sound I would pretty much use, which is um, a sound that, you know, I call it HB vocal channel, which is my own setting that's based on basically the factory preset of HB vocal channel, but a little, I, I varied it a little bit for this singer. Why does everything feel so numb? I try to talk, but I ain't got nothing to say. I just wanna be like. I put the vocal multiplier on. I still have all that compression and really cool EQ and all that stuff. But when I put this on, I get the extra vocals. So. Why does everything feel so numb? I try to talk, but I ain't got nothing to say. And that's with our low octave, obviously. Uh, right here. Where are we here? Yeah, I'll take that out. So. Why does everything feel so numb? I try to talk, but I ain't got nothing. Took out the Howard Benson vocals off, then you would have. Why does everything feel so numb? I try to talk, but I ain't got nothing to say. I just want to be left. It makes it, as soon as you put Howard Benson vocals on, it pulls it forward. It gives you that really cool top end sound and the extra compression that you're used to with that plugin. So um, on the top is I use a little bit of de-essing before I get to the vocal, even, I, even though on Howard Benson vocals, I do use the de-esser a bit. I also like to de-ess. And some of the singers, I have to do a little bit of extra de-essing. In this, in this particular singer, I do a little bit of de-essing ahead of time. So that's kind of why I have that on. Um, it's not necessary, but my mixer kind of likes it, so it's just his thing. So, you know, I go with it. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, I can, you can put it before the Howard Benson vocals, but I think then you're compressing additional vocals. That's not kind of really what you want to do. You want to kind of, like, have it after the vocal. So you're just adding them and mixing them in a little bit. So that's why this knob is really important here, this mix knob, because you don't want to... So yeah, there's a lot you can do with it. I think depending on what song you're doing, if it's a real metal song and stuff that where you're just going for big impact, I turn the knobs much higher. With stuff that's more poppy, I'm a little bit less dramatic with it. So I think, again, it depends on what singer you're working with and what kind of record you're making. That's why the presets are really important. We spend a lot of time on the presets to make sure that you had a starting point as you did with Howard Benson vocals.
In fact, I took a lot of the effects off for this, but I'll put back on the way it was sound. Now the cool thing is there's no additional vocals going on here at all except the vocal multiplier. So you, there's none of the harmonies going on and I don't have the double going on. So. So yeah, I mean, I basically eliminated having to do a double, having to do unisons, and having to add a, a low vocal by using the plugin. And for someone like me who does a million records, it's awesome to just be able to have the plugin in its real basic state, which is to do what I just described. But then there's all this other stuff you can do with it, which is just huge sounding, you know, delayed additional things of things so it's for guitars it's more guitars it's drums it's more drums so that's kind of why it's so useful you can just add more of stuff and especially these kind of records with rock music you want everything just to be huge so that's kind of how i look at it